Good morning. Glad that you're with us today, and I've been praying for each of you this week. I trust that you've had a wonderful week and a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. Uh, we're going to continue praying that better days are ahead of us because of Jesus. Let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this time together. We pray that the Holy Spirit would move through the singing and through the message from the Word of God, and that in everything your name would be lifted up and glorified. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. We praise you, Lord, for the outcome of what's going to happen during our time together. We ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The news came to Jesus. Please come fast. Lazarus is sick. Without your help, he will not last. Mary and Martha watched their brother die. They waited for Jesus, he did not come, and they wondered why. The death watch was over, buried for days. Somebody said, he'll soon be here, the Lord's on his way. Martha ran to him, and then she cried. Lord, if you'd been here, you could have healed him, he'd still be alive. But you're four days late, and the hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why you waited so long. But his ways are God's ways, not yours or mine. And isn't it great when he's four days late, he's still on time. Jesus said, Martha, show me the grave. But she said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been there four days. The gravestone was rolled back. And then Jesus cried. Lazarus come forth. Then somebody said, he's alive, he's alive. A battle of fear You've cried to the Lord I need you now But he's not up here Friend, don't be discouraged Cause he's still the same He'll soon be here He'll roll back the stone And he'll call out your name these four days late, and all hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why we waited so long, but His way is God's way, and not yours or mine. And isn't it great when He's four days late? Still on time. God is so great, and He's four days late. He's still on time. Praise the Lord. The Lord is always on time. I'm going to be reading one verse, and I'll be quoting several more through the message. And it's in John chapter 16, verse 33 says these words. These things have I spoken unto you that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The word of God for God's people. Let us pray. Father, we're very thankful for our time together, and we ask in Jesus' holy name that you would be with us and help us in all things. Lord, may the word speak to our hearts and challenge us 
and draw us to a closer walk with you. If there are any today who are listening to this message and they have yet to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, it is my prayer that today the Lord would touch their hearts and that they might recognize Jesus for who he is, that he died on the cross for all sins, and that he died on the cross for that person's sin today who's listening, who knows they need Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I pray the words would be your words for us, and we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory, for we ask all these things in Jesus' most wonderful and holy name. Amen. You know, we go through times. This, this entire year has been something else. In fact, a lot of people have said maybe we ought to have a retake on the entire year, but things don't work like that. God is always working, and his people have gone through adverse times. This isn't the first time, and it won't be the last time. But you know, there will come a time when all things will be made brand new. All things will be perfect the way God intended from the very beginning. You see, the dark days were ahead for the disciples in the scripture I just read you. The betrayal of Christ by Judas was coming. The trial when they would forsake him and, uh, and flee, that was coming. The time that Peter denied Jesus Christ would come. And then would come the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But Jesus prepared the disciples and he prepares us for the coming dark days. He told them about heaven in John 14, verses 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. He told them about the Holy Spirit also too, that another comforter was coming who would not only be with them, but would be in them as well. And he called them friends. Jesus reminded them that people who were not friends didn't know what their master was doing. But in their case, he called them friends because he made all things known to them. Now, how did teachings like this bring us peace in troubled time? First thought is, is how does the hope of heaven bring us peace? And I already read the scripture. We all have trouble here. In this world, we're told we would have tribulation. But Jesus reminds us to have to be of good cheer for he's overcome the world. And so we share in the troubles of the world. We share in those things. Uh, we find ourselves dealing with these things. But believers find peace by taking the long look. The long look. And in that, that means that their eyes are continuously upon Jesus Christ. No matter what happens, our faith is what carries us along the way. You know, the world doesn't have that kind of hope. They would look and they find their happiness in people and in things, but we find our happiness from a right relationship with Jesus Christ. Even during times of great distress, people can still see Christians looking forward to tomorrow with great anticipation because Jesus is already there. Yet if we do realize that we may go through trials, we recognize also too that they're also temporary. A trial is just that, it's a test. It's something that we will go through. And how we deal with it, how we look at Jesus through it, and how we keep our eyes on him the entire time will determine not only how long the tribulation is, but how well we will come out on the other side. Yes, we'll go through those tribulations, but always remember they're for a short moment. And comparing to eternity, anything that we would have to go through in this world is worth going through that we might be uh, knowing Jesus forever and ever in heaven. So while we look beyond the tribulations, we look beyond them, we recognize that the best is yet to come, and we just have extreme confidence in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus told us to not let ourselves be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And it's sometimes, I realize, difficult for us to not be troubled. But we're promised that if we will keep our eyes on him, he will deliver us from that distress. Misery's here, uh, but mansions are ahead. Also, too, pain here, but the prepared place for us remains ahead of us. That gives us great and wonderful hope. 
We put up with contrary people here, but we'll spend eternity with Jesus Christ. He alone makes it worthwhile. Others may desert us, but Christ is coming for us. Another question might be, how can the Holy Spirit bring us peace? The Comforter. Well, Jesus called the Holy Spirit the Comforter. The very reason that he exists is to remind us of the very words that Jesus spoke. Isn't it amazing how that you will be going through a time of difficulty? Or maybe you're helping someone deal with some difficulty in their life. And all at once the words will come to you. You'll remember the scripture plainly. Remember, you'll remember words that Jesus spoke to you through the word of God. And it's at that time that the Holy Spirit shows you the real application of those verses in an effort to bring you peace and also too to bring comfort to others in whom you share Christ with. Just always remember, it's not through your power and your strength, but rather it's through the Holy Spirit who makes all this possible. He indeed is our comforter. He comforts us when we feel like caving in, when we feel like giving up. He is there. When we're distressed, he's there. And the Holy Spirit dwells within every believer. Jesus said the comforter would not only be with us, but would be in us, meaning that we have real power and real strength that's not available to the unsaved world. My encouragement to you today is because you're a Christian and you have the comforter living in you, Rely on him. Let him do for you what you can't do for yourself. And rely upon the promises of God, knowing that he will make sure your way is prepared, that everything that you do will bring peace to others and also will bring joy in your life because God is ahead making the difference already. The comforter is available at all times. And since he dwells in all of us, he's reminding us and he's teaching us of all the things that Jesus said. And as faith increases, as I've told you before in other messages, faith increases, fear decreases. The Holy Spirit reminds us of God's faithfulness. And through this, we've seen God's faithfulness. In the churches I've ser served here in the last 16 years, I've witnessed three healed with cancer, one from a stroke that was terrible, and God is able to do these things. Many times we look and uh, we see miracles from God and we're not thankful as we ought to be. I want to encourage each of you. We just celebrated Thanksgiving and now we're in the first Sunday of Advent. I want to encourage each of you to keep your eyes upon Jesus and recognize what he's doing in this world because he is indeed still at work. He still indeed is producing miracles. We just need to look around. And see what he's doing. Also, the Holy Spirit reminds us of God's faithfulness and what a friend that Jesus is because he provides us peace. Friends are close in time of need. Jesus is even closer. We're told that he is our greatest friend. And lastly, the friend loves us. Jesus, who's our greatest friend, took our sins. And this is for the saved person and for the lost person. So Christian, remind yourself of this very thing. Jesus loves you so much that he died for you and he's never changed his mind about you. And he's still making intercession for you even to this day. But for the person who's lost today that might be listening, Jesus died on the cross for you too. It's not just for a select few, but it's for all who would call upon the name of the Lord. Scripture is very clear on that. All who would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you feel the tugging of the Holy Spirit on your heart today, saying, you know, Jesus, whom Donald is talking about, is real, and I believe that he wants to save my soul, why not come to him today? And if you do, get in touch with me. I'd love to share that and would love to tell you more about Jesus. And you can know these things even today. I want to encourage you to, to know Jesus plainly as your Savior and then find a church that you can serve him in. You're always welcome at one of the two that I serve but find some place where you can celebrate Christ and hear the truth taught about him wherever you are and that you can learn more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and follow him in baptism. You will always be glad that you did. And this friend, Jesus, he does love us and he does call us his friend. I praise the Lord that Jesus, the creator of the universe, would look at little old me and call me his friend. And I know that you who are saved today you feel pretty humbled by that as well. You are friends of Jesus if you do those things that he's commanded you. And we know something else in Scripture too. His commandments are not grievous, meaning they're not difficult to do. 
they ought to bring us joy. I hope today that this message finds you with real Christian joy. And I hope that you find that in all things, he's always there. This friend will never forsake us either. You know, you might have a friend out there that would be with you and, and would help you through all things. And, my, and I had some friends like that in my life. Some that would be with me during the hardest times of my life. But they can only go so far. They can only be with me at certain times. They have responsibilities themselves. But I found that Jesus has always been there to meet every need that I have, even through the most difficult times, whether it be the death of my mother, whether it be the death of a son, whether it be the death of one of my dearest friends, Jesus is still there. You know, today, I want to encourage you to continue to be one who trusts and believes in him for all things. You know, we need to remain faithful to the things that Jesus has commanded us. We are reminded that once again, there are troubles in this world. And in Christ, even in those times, we can have peace. Remember, Jesus loves you. He always has, and he always will. And I'm going to be praying for each of you this week that God would give you peace and blessing as well. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Dear Father, thank you for all that you're doing. I pray, Lord, that you would give us real strength and real encouragement and help us, Lord, in the times and the days ahead. I know some are discouraged right now because of being locked in. Help them, Lord, with this distress. Some are fearful of COVID-19. Help them with this fear because we recognize real fear is not from you. But, Father, even in times like this, we can experience your peace and your love and your joy. We're just reminded, Lord, that a heaven waits for us, the Holy Spirit indwells us, and we have a friend in Jesus who sticks closer than a brother. We praise you, Lord, and thank you for all that you're going to do. For we ask all these things today in Jesus' most wonderful and holy name.